Some people strengthen a community simply by their presence. They make us better people through their beliefs and values. They show us how to be successful business leaders with their clarity, courage, and commitment. And they teach us how to be good neighbors by caring for one another. Although he would have been the last to admit it, George Strike was just such a man. George's parents were Greek immigrants. He grew up in Salt Lake City, the youngest of four siblings. He got his first job when he was 10, helping the local milkman on his daily deliveries. George ran bottles of milk to the houses in the neighborhood. He worked two hours before school and earned 10 cents a day. On Saturdays, he would work half a day and earn 25 cents. That was pretty good money for a kid in 1940, especially one like George, who liked being responsible and independent. When George was a teenager, his entrepreneurial father, a self-taught engineer, started the Ajax Pressing Machine Company, producing equipment for the dry cleaning and commercial laundry industry. That's where George went to work, part-time as a janitor, shipping parts, doing odd jobs. It also where he began to understand one simple piece of advice he had gotten from his parents. Always do the very best you can. It would serve as an anchor throughout his life and 70 years in business. When George graduated from the University of Utah in 1951, he joined the family business full time. A few years later, the business was acquired by the American Laundry Machinery Company, which was headquartered here in Norwood. George continued to run the Ajax division in Utah for the next five years. Then at age 32, he was named president of the parent company and he moved his family to Cincinnati. American Laundry was responsible for the one-hour martinizing concept, an idea that revolutionized the dry cleaning business. Instead of clothes being dry cleaned at a plant somewhere, they could now be cleaned faster in your neighborhood. And the company produced the special equipment to clean the garments using this new, safer cleaning process. And the company thrived growing into the largest dry cleaning franchiser in the United States. In 1972, after 10 years leading American Laundry, George made a change. He left the industry entirely and bought Hess and Eisenhart. The company was famous for making customized limousines, hearses, ambulances, and armored automobiles. George stepped in and, of course, gave it his very best. But he ran head first into the oil crisis of 1973 and sales dropped 40% his first year. Undeterred, George knew the company would rebound, and it did, in part because he was courageous enough to start another division within the company. It was at a time when car manufacturers had all but stopped making convertibles. So while the core business slowed, George added markets and product lines, producing special order convertible cars. At one time, Hess and Eisenhardt produced 3,000 custom Jaguar convertibles a year. Meanwhile, American Laundry was struggling, and that intrigued George. So in 1978, he bought the company and returned to the family business. He was able to know where he was needed, and he got there. As always, he gave it his very best. He helped bring the company back to solid footing and guided its growth until his death. At the time, he was also head of two other family ventures, Advanced Textile Systems and Martin Franchises Incorporated. George Strike was a brilliant business leader, but that's only half the story. The other half was something George called paying civic rent. He believed that he had a moral responsibility to provide for the extended family, creating jobs and services for the community. He saw this as giving back in return for the privilege and benefit it provided him. To George, this was just what you did. He was a passionate supporter of the Cincinnati Reds. For a long time, he was even a limited partner. He made this investment because he loved the game, of course, but more so because he understood how important the Reds are to the very fabric and fiber of this city. George uh, loved his Reds. I mean, he really loved his Reds. And I'd see him at the ballpark, 
and he'd be glum looking, which is not characteristic of George. And I'd say, what's wrong, George? You're not having any fun? He said, I'm going to have fun next, next inning when we take the lead. And, that, and that's the way he felt, and that's the way he was. And he was an inspiration to everybody. George was an upbeat, very, very uh, hardworking, uh, successful, wonderful fella. And then there was his passionate support of community health and education. He felt that both were important to keep a city strong. He was chairman of UC Health of Greater Cincinnati, the University of Cincinnati Board of Trustees, the Health Alliance of Greater Cincinnati, and the University of Cincinnati Hospital Board. He was also chairman of the Cincinnati Council on World Affairs. I was very fortunate to uh, be introduced to George Strike uh, over 40 years ago. I was able to know him quite well over 20 years ago. And then during the last uh, five years of his life, worked very closely with him. We were the two uh, surviving directors from the old Health Alliance of Greater Cincinnati, and we became the first two uh, directors of UC Health. And it was such an honor and pleasure to work with him. Uh, he had a wonderful mind, a great sense of humor, and uh, just a tremendous character, uh, highest uh, ideals and character traits. And the uh, University of Cincinnati and UC Health will be forever indebted uh, to George Strike for all of his great contributions. In 2012, he received the President's Award for Excellence from the University of Cincinnati. He was honored with a Lifetime Healthcare Hero Achievement Award. He also served on numerous nonprofit boards, both locally and nationally, and received honorary degrees from the University of Cincinnati and the University of Utah. He uh, gave his time uh, to many different organizations, to the university, uh, to UC Health, and he never stood aside, and he reminds me of uh, the reason why there is a Presidential Medal of Freedom. Um, John Gardner said, uh, one of the writers and winners of that award said that, how dare you stand aside, and George Strike never stood aside. He was always there, especially when the going uh, got tough, um, putting all of his energy into trying to make these pillar institutions uh, move onward and to move to uh, greater levels of uh, contribution to society. So he epitomizes that. I miss him dearly um, and he deserves to be honored. In always doing the best he could in business and in his support of the community, George Strike made Cincinnati better for all of us.